for losing some significance because you don't have a point of reference to what it's like to be in a fight. But, but if you ever had to fight for anything that belonged to you, Sometimes we fight for things that don't really belong to us. But if you've ever had to fight, then you understand what I'm talking about. But, but I'm not talking about a boxing match. I'm not talking about a wrestling match. I'm not even talking about mixed martial arts or full contact karate because all of those fights have rules. I'm talking about the kind of fight to where the enemy sometimes hits you below the belt. I'm talking about the kind of fight to where he scratches your eyes and he kicks you in the back and, and he torments your kids and, and he torments your husband or your wife. I'm talking about the kind of fight that gets so heated sometimes that you got to say, look, devil, I need a break. Look, devil, I'm going to lay down today. You don't have to fight me today. I'm talking about the kind of fight that gets so heated uh, to where you have to fight with all that is within you just to be able to say that I'm still standing. Uh, my life is a fight. Sometimes we go through things that we don't necessarily understand. And sometimes we go through things and we blame the devil for what's going on in our lives. But sometimes it rains on the just, just like it rains on the unjust. Sometimes God needs to prove that thing that is in you. So sometimes you will have to fight. But don't get weary. Don't get weary. Don't get tired. Because the moment you get tired is the moment you are closest to your destiny. You see, the enemy knows that he cannot stand a direct blow from you. The enemy knows that he cannot destroy you. So what he does is he tries to get you weary. He tries to wear you out. He tries to threaten you and taunt you and have you fearful that you won't even want to fight. But don't get weary in your well-doing because in due season you will reap if you faint not. Now there is no question that Samson was effective. The enemy was not fighting against Samson because he was not effective. He was very effective and essentially he was taking on the Philistine army single-handedly. That he did not have any help from his brothers in arms. They were cowering away from the fight. So the enemy was attacking him because he was attacking the enemy. And it says that I'm doing to them as they've done unto me. Or in other words, the enemy attacked him, so he attacked the enemy back. So the enemy was attacking him because he was effective. And when the enemy is on your track, and when it seems like it's one trial after another, sometimes the enemy is attacking you because you are effective in what you're doing. You see, you've got to understand that the enemy's not going to attack you if you're not doing anything relevant for the kingdom. You see, the enemy's not going to attack a lukewarm Christian because essentially you're working for him. Hey Amen. He's not going to attack you if you're on church on Sunday and in the club on Friday and in somebody's bedroom on Saturday because you are becoming a reproach to the name of Jesus Christ and he does not have to attack you because you are attacking yourself. Amen. Hey Amen. But if you are living godly, if you're leading your family in the church, uh, not saying that you won't make mistakes, uh, but if you're leading the charge uh, and you say, for God I live and for God I'm going to die, you're going to suffer persecution sometimes. Uh, if you're doing what God has required that you do, uh, if you're feeding the hungry, if you're witnessing to those that don't know, uh, if you're making your way into the house of God uh, and laying out on the altar, say, God, fix me before you expose me so that I can live for you then the enemy will come after you with both guns blazing 
You've got to understand that the more you do for God, the more you make up in your mind to do for God, the more the enemy is going to come after you. But God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. But the enemy is coming after you because he hates what you represent. He hates who you are. He hates that God loved you so much that he would send his only begotten son. He hates you so much because he knows that God sent his son to die. Jesus stepped out of heaven, stepped out of righteousness, put on a filthy garment, and if you were the only one here, he'd have done it all over and over again. Oh my God. God loves you so much. He loves you so much. The more he loves you, the more the enemy hates you. The more he does for you, the more the enemy tries to take away what he's done for you. But look here in the text. Let me show you this. Might I suggest to you that the Philistines were not the real problem here. Might I suggest that the men of Judah were more of a problem than the army of the Philistines? Because it says in the text that the men of Judah bound Samson. The men of Judah tied his hands and delivered him unto the Philistines. And the Philistines came to the men of Judah. Samson was down hiding in a rock, but the Philistine army came and met with the men of Judah and said, we're coming to bind Samson. Now, now watch this. They were telling the men of Judah that they were coming to bind Samson, but it was already obvious that they could not bind Samson because if they could have bound Samson, they would have already had him bound because he was fighting them every time they came after him. So what they did is they came to the people he loved, came to the ones that were afraid of the fight, and they threatened them with war. They threatened them with warfare and had them turn Samson over themselves. When the enemy threatens you with bondage, when he threatens you with disease or sickness, when he threatens you with poverty, you have got to realize that the word says, he whom the son sets free is free indeed. But when the enemy tries to bind you in your mind, You've got to understand that he can't bind what God has already loosed. And if God has loosed you and God has set you free, then all the enemy can do is taunt you. And if it doesn't work when he comes after you, he's going to come after your friends. He's going to come after your loved ones. He's going to threaten them with insecurities and depression and anxiety. And he's going to try to get them to bind you up. He knows that he can't touch your anointing. He knows he can't touch your spirit. But he knows he can touch your best friend. He knows he can touch your girlfriend. He knows he can touch your boyfriend. He knows he can touch your child. He knows he can touch your husband. He knows he can touch your boss. He knows he can touch the one that you respect the most. The one you need the endorsement from. And he will come after them and combat them with fear and try to use them to bind you up. But what you have to realize is that no weapon formed against you will be able to prosper. He did not say the weapon would not form, but he said the weapon would not prosper. Weapons will form as long as you proclaim the name of God. That's why you have to realize and liken your Christian walk as to being in a fight. Your life is a fight. And if you don't realize that your life is a fight, you will be taking bumps and bruises, not even realizing or discerning it's the devil busting you upside the head. If you don't realize that you're in a fight, you will be taking bumps and bruises, not even realizing that the enemy is trying to destroy you. And oftentimes when he tries to destroy you, he tries to get you before you come into the relevance of who you are in the kingdom. He does not wait for you to understand your purpose before he attacks. He tries to attack before you understand who you really are. 
You may know that God has something great or God is going to do something, but you don't know exactly what God is going to do. That is the time when you're the most vulnerable.